Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecturelet about existential closure. In the last lecturelet, we left off building verb phrases uh, and composing them and not really completing them. So what are we going to do with them? Right, so what we need to do is finish out Davidson's idea that we existentially quantify over these events. And how are we going to do that? So we saw in uh, before, right, if we have an, a sentence like one, Jen runs, uh, we can say that uh, there is an event of Jen running, or to be more precise, there is an E such that E is an event, and uh, E is an event of Jen running. Now this gets us the right truth conditions, and it works out and uh, allows us to do all sorts of things with it, and it also helps us give a negation really easily, because now instead of an existential quantifier, we just have to have a negative quantifier. So like in two, Jen didn't run, is there is no event of Jen running. Right? Works out. Now, Davidson didn't really get into the reason for the existential quantifiers, except that it captured intuitively what these sentences seem to mean. But uh, first, later on, uh, Terence Parsons uh, discovered stronger motivations involving the kinds of entailments that come out and uh, really motivated the reason for re not only needing these existential quantifiers, but absolutely requiring them. So he, he, he did so by comparing the behavior of adjectives and adverbs uh, with respect to what are called diamond entailments. So if you look at the diamond entailment pattern uh, for the sentence in three, we'll see, we can see how that works. So it's, right, for sentence three, Jen is a blonde, blue-eyed American. Um, that's going to be true if she's blonde, if she's blue-eyed, and if she's American. And this is how that works, right? So a blonde, uh, blue-eyed American. Now, if... Now, whenever that holds, right, she has all of these properties. Now, let's say that she's a blonde American. This will entail this. She's blonde, blue-eyed American. She's a blonde American, but she's also a blue-eyed American, and she's also a blonde and blue-eyed. But we'll set that aside. Now, both of these will entail that she's American. Right? They won't. Right? They also this. They won't both entail that she's blonde, but they'll both entail that she's American. Right? And this gives us a diamond shape, so we call it diamond entailment. Now, these are downward entailments right? because. Set of blue-eyed Americans is smaller. Or sorry, is a, um, sorry, these are upward entailments in the sense that uh, blonde blue-eyed Americans is a subset of blue, uh, blonde-eyed Americans. But if we're going downward on the diamond, right? We'll notice that um, if we combine these two properties, B A and B E of A. So if she's blonde-eyed. American and she's a blue eyed American, that will entail the top. Right? So if she's a blonde American and a blue eyed American, it does entail she's a blonde, blue eyed American. But that doesn't work with events. Right? So if we said Jen met Terry, if she met Terry under the campanile at midnight, that will entail that she met Terry under the campanile. It will entail that she met Terry at midnight. And both of those will entail that she met Terry. There we go, no problem, we get a diamond. But if we combine these, it doesn't entail this. So if we say, Jen met Terry under the campanile, and Jen met Terry at midnight, it does not entail that Jen met, Carrie, Jen met Terry under the campanile at midnight. So there's a difference here. This does not work. So there's a distinction. And that distinction, Parsons notes, comes out of the fact that in these cases, the subject is referential. It's Jen. Right? Jen is a blue eyed American. Jen. So when properties are applied to a referential individual, then this entailment pattern holds. Which tells us that in this case, we're not applying these verbal predicates to a referential event. So we don't have a referential event. Well, what do we have? Well, Parsons notes that 
when this is a this has a subject that is not referential but is instead an existential quantifier, then this fails to hold too. So if we say someone is a blue-eyed American, it entails someone is American. If we say someone is a blonde-eyed American, it entails someone is American. But if we say someone is a blonde American and a blue-eyed American, I'm sorry, someone is a blonde American and someone is a blue-eyed American, that does not entail that someone is a blonde, a blonde blue-eyed American. And, and you can think about that because there could be someone that has this property, a different person who has this property. And then this would be true, but this would not. So the entailment failed. When does it fail? It fails when this has a, an, existential, an existential quantification of what? The existential quantification of the property that the, or sorry, of the, the existential quantification of the argument that these properties share. So this is American of X, blue-eyed of X, blonde of X. When you quantify over that X, this, this pattern fails. So this ought to apply here. We have at midnight of E, under the campanile of E, and met Terry of E. Then, if we existentially quantify over the E, this entailment pattern fails. Therefore, we existentially quantify over these events. So, by working that way, we make sure that we get the existential quantification. Now, how do we get the quantification into the semantic? And that's going to require a little bit of uh, trickery. So compositionally, um, one way we can do it comes out of the philosophical literature using the property of existential closure, which is simply you throw in an existential quantifier that closes out the open the free variable. So we just add there is an x and then we're done. Or in this case, there is an e. We could do that. Um, we could define it as a as a rule which is called a, a unary operation, because it doesn't combine anything. Um, well, we have unary operations for terminal nodes, but